Welcome back to another great episode of the Cross Border Interviews with Chris Brown. It is our very first entertainment rundown of 2022. And of course, we have our man in the sky, Mr. Michael Nichols Pate, coming from us live from New York State. Mikey, thanks so much for doing this once again. Pleasure to be here. Pleasure. I'd like to thank the Academy. (laughs) Pleasure's all mine. There is a lot that we have to talk about over the last two months since we actually sat down and did a monthly recap of entertainment news. But I think the most pressing, the biggest story, the smelliest story that we have to get out of the way is, Mike, would you buy a TikTok star's farts in a jar. She's, she's not even a TikTok. Well, she, I guess she's a TikTok star, but she was on um, 90 Day Fiance before the 90 days. That is where I found out who this human being was when she pretended to be a lesbian. Or no, I think she pretended to be bisexual. She pretended to like girls, period. And joined this show to go fly to Australia to make her YouTube channel more famous. And then now I guess she's on TikTok and then now she's going to the hospital because she was farting in jars and selling it. You, you know you're going to have a good hour and a half, two hours with Chris and Mikey when, when we start off with the fart girl. <laughs> Not the other pressing issues in the world, but how can you sell your farts for money? And Probably the same way you can them? sell feet pics for money. Uh, yeah. Perverts on the internet are dumb and bad for their money. I just... It brings up it's true. Story. It's true. Andy Warhol said it best. Everyone deserves their 15 minutes of fame. She already had it. I can't believe her 15 minutes of fame is going to be remembered for being the fart girl. Like, how honored would your mother and father to, would how, like how much pride would your mother and father have in you if you were known around the world as the person who had a heart attack for selling farts? in a jar (laughs) i don't know about proud but i mean could be worse i could be a dj oh sorry (laughs) bad joke coming for all the djs across this great country of ours of canada and the united states and around specifically mr worldwide he's a dj i think (laughs) don't know who that is so i'm just gonna say sure he sounds like a good person who uh is well known mr worldwide pitbull Oh, uh, Timber Guy? Timber. Yeah. yeah. Cheerleader. Mr. Worldwide. He yeah, rhymed Kodak with Kodak. <laughs> so I, Such a literary genius. Shows you how much I've been paying attention to the news, of the, the entertainment music industry, because I did not know his nickname was Mr. Worldwide to begin with. Just that good. I'm just that good. Um, but let's actually talk about some of the biggest entertainment news stories throughout the. Uh, I, I would say 30 days, but let's probably go 60 days. Uh, let's start off with the one thing that we are now entering into, and that is award season of the great movie, television, music. Uh, for a quick recap, let's just talk about uh, Grammys were supposed to be held in January, but they got pushed back till April. The Oscars have been pushed back a month until March, which they were going to be because of the pandemic that pushed them back last year. So therefore, we have the Oscars coming out in March 27th. April 3rd is going to be the Grammys. Uh, we have the Screen Actors Guild Awards the coming up here soon. The Critics' Choice Awards coming up in February. The Not-So-Golden Globes have already come and gone, and we are recapped. Let's just start with the award season ceremony. Is this a favorite time in the Mikey household? Um, I mean... That's a really good recap, eh? Yeah, there's a lot of <laughs> shit going on, eh? Eh? <laughs> um, let's see. Is this a favorite time? I really like the Oscars. I think that, you know, the Golden Globes have always been a shit show. It's just an excuse for celebrities to get really, really drunk and messy. Yeah. Um, and now there wasn't even a Golden Globe. And there wasn't so even I, a ceremony. So, As I like to call it, the not-so-Golden Globe. So I mean, uh, my favorite moment from the Golden Globes was when they tweeted out about the West Side Story win and basically said, if you want to have a good laugh, watch West Side Story. And then they fired whoever that intern was and changed it to, if you want mu- music to move you. And I'm like, whoever wrote this does not know what happens in West Side Story. 
I mean, it is a good laugh, but like not for the reasons y'all think. It was. Uh, I remember you sending me that text, but uh, that tweet or text or whatever you want to call it. Tweet. Tweet is it? Is that what we call it now? Is that a tweet? Can you? It was a tweeter. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay, just making sure. I just had to turn <laughs> off my other. Don't, don't come for me. Don't come for me. This, can you hear me now? Can you hear me? Can, can you hear me hear, now? Oh, yeah. Can you hear me now? <laughs> Two years of doing this with you, and I still can't understand how to use my mics properly via Zoom. So there, that, that shows you how much I'm paying attention. Um, it was the Golden Globes are traditionally held NBC, but last year they got sort of turf for not being diverse enough for a well. The Hollywood, Hollywood press had like three press. people of color out of a hundred people there. So this year they got Snoop Dogg to announce the uh, nominees. Uh, they had the ceremony, a private ceremony where people were still wearing uh, gowns and all that, but no one was in attendance from what I understand. Are the Golden Globes done? Are they officially I don't know. Done? I, I don't know. I don't, and honestly, uh, the Golden Globes are a joke in most of the like commute like the acting community in Hollywood and everything like most of the people that do a lot of that acting and and get cast and things don't care about the globes just because it is such a it's so swayed and I mean someone will go in and they'll win for the golden globe for an award and or for a movie that's more geared towards what the Hollywood foreign press want and then not even get nominated in any other, any other award show. So it's like, it's so in its own bubble, but. I, I was, the only reason I'm mentioning this joke is because I, I literally, I've been watching, I've been binge watching Modern Family for the last two weeks because I've literally had nothing else to do in my life um, because I'm recovering and all that fun stuff. But there was a joke that Cameron Tucker said to Mitchell Pritchett and they, he said that you can buy a golden globe, but you win a, a, an Academy award. Is that exactly. true? Is exactly. that true? Yes. Oh, okay. Oh, so that's why yep. they never won the golden globe. For well, if longtime viewers will, or listeners would remember when we had the Emily in Paris debacle, it got all sorts of nominations because they bought, the Hollywood Foreign Press, like a backstage trip and a whole tour and, and this whole adventure for the Hollywood Foreign Press. And then all of a sudden it got nominated for all these things for the Golden Globes. You, you buy your way into the Globes, usually. So what takes its place? Because I, I, I remember back, well, I would say probably five, 10 Does years Does something ago, need to? But it usually kicks off the award season season, right? The Golden sure. Globes are usually in January, the first few weeks in January, and they usually kick off the award season because then the SAG comes out a week later. Oscar nominees usually, and this is prior to po- uh, pandemic 2020, um, the Oscar nominees would come out like the day after the Golden Globe. So it would be Golden Globe ceremony and then nominees would be the next day because everyone would be like, oh, they got nominated. They're the front runner for the Oscars, so on and so forth. Or do people, are even people caring? Because you've seen numbers decline for award seasons over the people last don't care. years. People don't care. People, people don't care. I mean, we, people barely we watch care. The, we well, care. I enjoy the Oscars, <laughs> yep. but like, I didn't miss the Golden Globes. I didn't miss not having to watch it. I don't watch the Critics' Choice Awards. Um, the Grammys, I'll usually give a watch to, but like, I just find award shows are going the way of the dodo at this point. I mean, what's what's the point of really wanting to watch them? Because you're just watching people get up there, preach their politics, and like, that's it. And I, I wish that it was, and it also it's becoming so niche with what's being viewed. Like, it's not movies that people are going and seeing. Like, yes, they're not maybe like Eternals. If you go in, uh, sidebar, if you have not gone and listened to our Eternals. Which does not it, come out later. It comes out later. We're going to be talking about that later. So please oh. please hold your comments until the Never end. Never mind. Ignore me. Ignore <laughs> me. Ignore me. Um, but like, 
Eternals is one that more people are watching. The new Spider-Man, everyone's basically tried to go and see. I mean, it's broken box office records. It's not going to get any Oscar nominations. I'd be surprised if it even got technical ones. They're not the movies that are getting, that are being watched, that are being considered. And the one time the Oscars tried to do that, which was the popular movie. Black Panther debacle that they had there. I don't even know if it was for Black Panther specifically, but they had like this whole popular movie that was going to happen or it was going to be another award. And I mean, how do you pick that? Like the one that wins, the mo- that got the most money? Like, so that's why they scrapped it. But I mean, they're, it's so industry heavy. Same with like the SAG Awards because the SAG Awards aren't generally watched, but they're revered as like a huge award that people want to win. But with the Oscars, it's like, what's the point? Like I- if, you, if you're not, if you don't care about like really artsy films, you're not going to want watch the Oscars. And as things go on and as society's progressing, most people aren't going to spend two and a half hours to sit there and watch Power of the Dog. I mean, it's a long movie. And if you're not into it and you don't want to just watch something for the acting, that's a slice of life type film. Why are you, why are you going to waste your two and a half hours to watch it? I, I think we talked about this a lot in the last uh, over the last year, and that was uh, the pandemic has really changed the name of the game for movies. Yeah. People do not, we, traditionally you will go see the movies, go to the movies for a date night out. Now with streaming services like Netflix, like uh, Disney Plus, with Amazon Prime, with their movie windows now shrinking from ninety days after theatrical release to forty five days, people are willing to wait for those. 45 days to go see a movie and just watch it from home yeah. because I think the idea and kind of like the awards season ceremonies movie theaters are going away the way of the dodo as well yeah Which is I sad. mean don't get me wrong I as someone who just went to a movie theater twice in the past month to, once to see Spider-Man and then the other time to see Scream 5 I, I mean I enjoy being in a movie theater and I missed it a lot more than I thought I had. But at the same time, it's like, I don't want to go and watch a two and a half hour movie, which most of these Oscar movies this year seem to be two and a half hours long. (laughs) Um, I don't want to go and watch a two and a half hour movie in a theater that's not action, that doesn't have suspense, that is just four people standing in a room talking to each other. Yeah. I need a lot more stimuli going on or my brain is just going to put me to sleep in that situation in the dark. And with us coming up to the 100th anniversary of the Academy Awards, we're at the 94th this year. There's going to, they're, they're going to have to start internally looking at themselves because as people start tuning out of a three hour long ceremony, people are not going to want to sit there and l- no. watch, like you said, actors and actresses and directors and writers get up on screen and go, oh, I, Donald Trump or this, that, and the other. It's just, it, it's getting pointless. Honestly, the only reason I watch the Oscars or any of these award ceremonies is to see who died. And that's the sad part. Wow. <laughs> I watch no, the I... memorial like, hey, I wonder which artists I don't know they have playing in the background. I... I like the Oscars. I like the award show part because I'm super competitive and I like to usually watch a lot of these artsier films and I like a good slice of life film and I try and watch every single movie that gets nominated. Um, Now I'm even trying to do technical awards. If I can get to the documentaries and foreign films, I'll try and do those also because I enjoy watching movies. It's something I really like. I really... um, and, and I found that kind of when you watch all the things that get nominated and you get the ballot and you're like competing with other people that have watched everything too, to see who like has the more award opinions or what I, I just find it fun. Like it's a competition. I'm halfway tempted to bet on the Oscars this year um, and turn it into a betting game. I know you love to bet on things. I throw my money around like money is thrown around. <laughs> But I just, I don't know. I find like with the Oscars, if you're not going to sit there and watch all, because it's usually, I think, 20 to 35 films that usually get nominated across everything. If you're not going to be, if you're not going to be willing to watch at least 10 of them, you're not going to have any interest in the Oscars because you're not going to know what's going on. And now as the movies are getting even more independent or smaller budget films and, and creative artsy kind of things that quite honestly, if you're not into it, you're not into it. And you can't force yourself to watch it. 
And there's it's usually that good. one movie that people get that gets thrown in there that gets nominated for something that no one has ever heard of. Every movie critic goes, to, "Why was this nominated?" And then it and, wins. Exactly. Uh, I think like last year, two years ago, I think it wasn't last year, if I'm not mistaken, but the year before Parasite, when that came out, a lot of people didn't know where this came from and it just came out of nowhere and they're like, okay, sure. Well, and a lot of people even thought that it shouldn't have been considered for best picture because it was a foreign language film. Yeah. Which is well, stupid in and of itself. Exactly. Because then then we can go Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. Should that have been yeah. considered? So or so. I mean or, or even the Lord of the Rings series because it spelled spoke elfish and there was subtitles. Well, no, I, listen, we all we apparently maybe we all don't know, but you hate Lord of the Rings. You don't think it should have had it's, it's not 10 that wins. I don't hate Lord of the Rings. It's I hate the movie adaptation of Lord of the Rings. I didn't hate it, and I'm a huge fan of the books. I've read those. I've reread those books like ten times, and, and I didn't the, hate the movies. I and really the Hobbit? didn't. Ugh. I well, listen. We're not talking about the Hobbit. We're talking about the Lord of the Rings. I did not watch the Hobbits. I saw the first one and said no thanks, and continued about my day. But I enjoyed the the first three. Well, I guess the back three. I don't know the way. It's it's weird how they do the prequels after they do the initials or whatever yeah. but i i really liked that movie and i think that that's one of the last times that like, a box office success was nominated in one things like mainstream awards yeah it also because... was against things that had no business being nominated but in all fairness <laughs> i i would disagree with that but we'll continue on i think lost in translation should have won I think Bill Murray gave his the his performance of his career in that movie, but again, we're we're not talking about old movies. We're talking about twenty twenty two and the important- yeah. But I mean, I think, but I think it, yes, we're not talking about old movies, but I think it all kind of plays back like people watched that in mass numbers and were rooting for it, so they came out in droves, to, not came out in droves, but they were watching the Oscars at a higher number to try and see is it going to win, is it not going to win. And then they were getting introduced to other movies they may not have thought about when it's all niche films and you look at the list of what's nominated and you're like, I think I've seen maybe the eyes of Tammy Faye. I don't know. Or, oh, Godzilla at the very bottom for just special effects. That's not like, granted, and I'm not, and I'm not about to sit here and get on my Godzilla versus King Kong um, pulpit and preach that it was a great movie because I did enjoy it. It was not, it's not going to win any best picture. But there are, you know, Spider-Man No Way from No Way From Home or No Way Home or no whatever the home. new then whatever the new version of Spider-Man in Home is should be considered for best picture. I, I, it was a very good film, despite your problematic opinions of Zendaya and not liking her. You are just throwing me under the. I'm bus. I'm gonna throw like, you under the bus today. Lord of the Rings and Zendaya. Like, what else are we gonna throw under the bus here? So okay. I don't know, Dune. <laughs> No, but like Dune's another one. I could see it getting a nomination for Best Picture, not because it necessarily should win, but it technically was very brilliant. Like the technical effects, the special effects, I enjoyed it. Don't know. Ooh, we about to fight people. For those who were listening to this, I just gave Michael the look of, are you kidding me? Dune was the slowest, if not worst movie I saw in 2021. And that says a lot because I saw some pretty crappy Hallmark Christmas movies this Christmas season. (laughs) I don't think I agree with that statement. What, that I saw crappy movies? Oh, no, 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 that I do agree with. (laughs) Or that that Dune was the worst. But in my opinion, I'm not saying what you should believe. I'm saying in my opinion, Dune was the worst movie of 2021. I just think if they put that spider-man and let's throw i don't want to throw the matrix i can't throw the matrix that um spider-man and maybe shang chi best picture not even eternals i (laughs) don't know if i would consider that one that people universally liked that's true because i mean that's the thing they're not gonna win they're especially when you're going up against like being the ricardos or Eyes of Tammy Faye. And again, this is all speculation. They've not announced anything. They Unless you're watching it. this after it's come out, in which case, <laughs> tell me how wrong I am. 
And if um, you're watching this four years from now, tell us how really bad we were when it comes out that some of the actors that we're talking about today did something stupid and they've been yeah. canceled since then. Zendaya won't get canceled. You never know. Um, That's fair. I want to... I want I want to I want to pose this question to you because this is, sure. this is what I've been looking at recently. I'm going back through all the old like Chicago Film Festival awards, the Toronto Film Festival awards, and they're pretty good indicators on where the Academy Awards are going and where they're sure. going to get their nominees from. Are these film festivals that have these award ceremonies pointless these days? Because I, I don't see the point of film festivals anymore and getting these small independent films out because with the rise of social media and we were not expected to talk about this and that's why I'm just posing this question with the rise of social media and the rise of uh, Netflix, Amazon, uh, Disney plus uh, crave TV here in Canada, HBO max, small independent films are getting more play through those avenues because they're picking them up to say here's our catalog of movies that we have and then they can say hey we have an academy award nominee film on our streaming service so pay 9.99 a month for us are film festivals going the way of the dodo as well no if anything i think film festivals are becoming more crucial to getting a lot of okay. these artsier films and i feel like because of film festivals. That's why we have the Oscars going in kind of an artsier direction because you're getting a lot more independent or smaller type films or things like Nomadland, which like swept last year. Things that you would never see made in like early 2000s because it was just such a small slice of life, didn't go anywhere, didn't tell anything extravagant. It was just like a family living their life and it didn't have a start and an end. Which there was Very Ladybird which there's a, like, that's all now, but if you 10, 12 years ago, you'd be hard pressed to find a single movie like that. Yeah, and I'm not sure if it's, I would even hedge my bet to say that it's probably been the last four years that that's Oh, yeah, absolutely. Like the pandemic really has screwed over Hollywood. And I'm not trying to say that it's a bad thing, but uh, the pandemic has, like everyone else was sitting in their basement writing their great novel they weren't sitting at starbucks writing their great novel it seems like every movie writer was not they were doing something else and i'm just trying to figure out where they were because the crop of movies that have been coming out recently are either 1990s remakes mm. or big blockbusters like marvel there's no there's no originality of movies anymore and i'm getting concerned that we are going the way that oh I'm going to call this the Dodo episode because I'm using that phrase a lot since you've put it's it my in my favorite. head. <laughs> it's one of my favorite phrases, so please. I, I'm afraid that the independent films that are being made aren't being made to the way that they used to be. And they're just, hey, here's a old book and we're taking the sort of storyline and making it into the 2022 ad adaptation of it. And I just, it's, Hollywood is not capturing me like it used to. Well, I, I think the biggest issue right now is that so many of these scripts, well, not even the scripts, a lot of Oscar, a lot of actors want to win Oscars because yeah. at that point you, you can be conceived as look at my tchotchke. I'm one of the best actors and act or actresses out there because I have this, a lot of them want it. And so it's reached that point now where they're putting their name on anything that could be a vehicle for them to get an Oscar. And we're getting a lot of very contrived scripts and contrived stories that on paper just don't work, but you're getting good actors and actresses which are propelling them forward because they're looking at that and saying, this script is garbage, but it has this specific moment that I can put my entire emotion into, be considered for a nomination and potentially win. Um, we're seeing it a lot. I mean, it's, it's a lot of very, like tough to follow stories, nothing maybe necessarily super groundbreaking, but just like, it's a slice of life. It's someone who is just sitting at home, like marriage story, I think it's, which was I think two years ago with Scarlett Johansson and Adam Driver is one of the biggest examples of this. That movie, that, that script was garbage, period. 
Adam Driver and Scarlett Johansson acted their faces off. In and that. Laura Dern. Can't forget Laura, and Laura Dern, Dern. Because she like, won the Oscar for it. Sure did. Acted their faces off. That script was garbage. But that isn't movie that what a, the role of an actor thing. is, though? Isn't that the role of an actor is to take the words and make them great? Because let's sure, be honest, sure. if you take away a lot of uh, the acting in a lot of movies, you can say, fuck, they're really bad. Sure, I 100% agree. But Lord because so many, uh, no. Because <laughs> so many actors and actresses want to win awards, it's pushing a lot more of these like films that maybe need uh, an extra... Uh, maybe or directors or or, play, or writers that maybe need a film or two to like get kind of going it, they're not getting that and they're being propelled all of a sudden they're being propped up as this like amazing thing because they had Nicole Kidman decide to hop on or Kate and I'm Blanchett. not this is or Kate Blanchett or or Zendaya, or because um, that was the Malcolm and Marie. Malcolm and Marie, I think that was Zendaya. It it was I want to say two years ago. It was a Netflix movie. It was in black and white. Also, can we leave black and white films in 2021? I'm so overseeing some artsy black and white film. No, the average person don't want to watch it. It's not as creative as you think. Everyone's doing it, and it's pretentious. Uh, okay. Uh, let's get back to the award season ceremony just for sure. a second here, because sure, uh, sure, sure. the Oscar producers have come out and announced that after a long hiatus of Jimmy Kimmel screw up a few years ago of not knowing who La La Land or Moonlight was and letting that was him Warren act, Buffett. Yeah, but then giving him a redemption of as host. Uh, they took a few years off of not having a host of the ceremonies. This year, they have announced that they're bringing a host back. There has been speculation of who that's going to be. It's James uh, Corden. <laughs> He's in our life forever. Is it actually? I don't know. I'm just assuming. Oh, fuck. <laughs> if it's James Corden, I'm not watching. Um, so they have announced that they're bringing back the, ho back the host. Good move, bad move. I, I, I'm indifferent about it because I'm really hoping that the Muppets who have been rumored to be that are going to be it because I want to see Miss Piggy and Kermit the Frog swear about, I don't know, every movie. I think, okay. Or the two, or the two old men up in the studio uh, movie theater. I feel like that would be, if it was the Muppets, that'd be super entertaining. You get people watching it because of the Muppets, because people want to see <laughs> the Muppets be crazy and talk like the Oscars. And then sure they do a whole pre-show thing with them and, you get people excited about that. Um, the biggest issue is they look at it as an opportunity to plug their late night show TV host and, and throw them on there. And it's not necessarily that they're bad, but it's just that they're not necessarily amazing to watch and, and able to carry it. Like I even look at the Tonys. The Tonys have had Neil Patrick Harris host so many times because he's an amazing host. Uh, they've had... Can Sean we not... Hayes host and he was an amazing host even Hugh Jackman was a very good host and it's because they're not and then all of a sudden James Corden popped up like six or seven times and who else I don't re I don't recall who? anyone else who else ever. nope I recall nothing <laughs> but that uh that's Dear Evan Hansen come on everyone remembers that cold opening with him singing Dear Evan Hansen who do you not know? Do you not who who do you think I'm talking about? I don't know who you're talking about. Who are you talking about? Kevin Spacey. I don't know who that is. Who is he? Okay, yeah. Is he someone that I'm supposed to remember? Because I feel like he's been canceled. <laughs> yeah. Well, RuPaul was canceled too. We still remember her or him mm. or them. But I just I think that they need to move away from like Jimmy Kimmel, Jimmy Fallon. James Corden, uh, but they, they Stephen tried, Colbert. Like, they've tried not... that as well, though, because they tried that with uh, uh, Seth uh, Seth MacFarlane. They tried that with Ken Bristol. They tried that with Steve Martin. Like, back in the 90s when the hosts were actually hosts with Whoopi Goldberg, like Whoopi and Robin Williams and Billy Crystal, those were the hosts that I remember. And those That's were the, the thing. You need a person who can carry it. You yeah. need a person who's going to be entertaining, and who's going to be able to like sit there and like keep the audience engaged. I think the Muppets would be a great pick. It might be a little too silly for what the Oscars wants to claim they are, but at this point, it's all a joke. Like 
nobody cares about your awards but yourselves yeah. so just have fucking fun with it if you want people to watch and all the studio uh, executives who want to rehash a movie and then put it up and try to sell it for another 500 million dollars or whatever yep yeah um so that's well i got well, one last award ceremony that we want to talk about and we mentioned i mentioned it briefly at the top of the hour the grammys were supposed to happen this year we we're supposed to happen yeah. this month but they got pushed back to april because of COVID 19 is this going to be a black widow thing where we keep on pushing it back until it actually happens like can, can we not just admit at this point in time we have to live to learn with this shit as much I as mean, as much as you don't want to you want to be able to go back to normal we have to live with it right is it going to be a black widow thing or a morpheus thing black widow at least happened morpheus has been pushed back for what three years now oh Morbius. Morbius. Said, Did I say Morpheus? You said Morpheus. I was like, what the fuck are you talking about Morpheus for? It's a good thing I'm somewhat pretty. <laughs> same thing. It's literally the same thing. Oh my God. I just have Matrix on the brain. What can I say? <laughs> Jeez. Okay. Um, is it going to happen? Like, like, is it going to happen? Is Morbius going to happen? I'm still not convinced this movie's been filmed. Hey. <laughs> I think Jared Leto was filmed a two minute commercial. To exactly. See if they could get some funding, but they're still kickstartering it. Zach Braff, go where me. are you? Where are you? It's Zach the GoFundMe. <laughs> yeah. But does, do the award ceremonies just have to go back and say, okay, we can't keep on moving things? Movie studios have to say, we can't keep on moving things because if we do, no, nothing's ever going to be released because Doctor Strange is being pushed back. Like all these movies are already getting pushed back again because another wave of something's coming out. It's just well, like the good thing enough. with the good thing with the Marvel movies is that they won't push it so much because it it means like they can't keep telling stories because you can't just like uh, pluck out Doctor Strange from the storyline and drop it somewhere else. It pushes everything back, so they're trying not to do it. I know for sure. But I think it's you have to be conscientious, especially right now. And if you want people to go to the box office, which after Scarlett Johansson sued them, they do. Um, they haven't been able to renegotiate a lot of contracts, I'm sure, since that happened. They want to make money. Yeah. And they want to, and I get it. Like you want people to, Marvel's the only thing people are going to the box office to see. And scary horror movies. Like horror movies are also things because people like seeing- Was it packed at screen? No, but it was a small theater. Okay. I'm not going to sit there and act like Scream 5 was packed a week and a half after it came out, but like it's also a smaller area. Yeah. It did have like 20 people in it, which was a lot for, I think, a pandemic. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I hope that the award ceremonies continue on. Like you said, we can't keep on pushing things back because everything else has to fall in line yeah. as well. Um. We're going to take a sort of a, a mellow tone on the next topic that I want to talk about. And 2022 is less than a month in as of recording this. We have seen some untimely people come and go. Well, not come and go, but go. Uh, it started off in December 31st, 2021 with the passing. And the only reason I'm mentioning this in the 2022 episode is because I'm saying that she passed in 2022 because Australia had already rang in the new year. So therefore Australia thinks she died in stretch. 2022. That's a stretch, but okay, yeah. I'll go for it. Um, we've had a few uh, major celebrities pass, uh, some shocking celebrities pass and some people have had some loss. And I know celebrities deaths, sometimes it doesn't mean much to people because we didn't know them. We didn't know them one-on-one, -on -one, but they, they had families, they had friends, they had loved ones. We had Betty White pass away at the ripe old age of 99. Bob Saget, Meatloaf. I'm just trying to think. I'm just uh, Louis Anderson. Sydney uh, Portier. Sydney Portier. Uh, and then just recently, as of recording this, I was uh, told yesterday from Mikey sending me a text, uh, fashion designer or something or other. Lou Mugler. 
I'm like, sure. Uh, I asked my husband who it was and he said, yeah, I know who it is. And it's like, he passed away and he goes, huh? It's like, okay, I guess I don't need to know that person. Mugler, you, you will know Mugler because they say it on Drag Race all the time. I'm giving you Mugler right now. Mugler inspired, it's like, he does a lot of stuff with like sculptural and architectural and so, horns and. So as, as I said at the beginning, uh, about 10 minutes into this, the only reason I watched the Oscars is for the In Memoriam. Um, some of these were shocking. Some of them were not. Uh, Betty White, we, we, everyone dies. I, I hate to break it to anyone who's listening to this right now, but at one point in time, you will die. I, I, I will never die. I, I think I have a morbid mindset now because I've looked death in the face and, and come at the other side. But what were your thoughts on some of the untimely deaths that we've happened in the last uh, month? So this is where I get told I'm heartless and I'm very aware. I just, I just told everyone they're going to die. So fuck it. We're not the heartless podcast by the end of this. We're not sure what we are. I just like, it's sad, but I'm uh. not like heartbroken. Like there were people I know that were like crying over Betty White's death and like, well, it's an end of an era, right? And Bob Saget's death. And like, I didn't know them personally. Oh, I just did the massive eye roll on Bob when you said Bob Saget died. I was like, oh, was like, that's going to look like, really good on him. But like, I just, I don't know. Like, I don't, it's sad, but I'm not going to like. It doesn't affect like, you. It right? doesn't affect me. I don't know him. Yeah. But, I don't know them from Tom. And like, it, yeah, it's sad. I like a lot of the work they did. Like I grew up watching Full House. The Golden Girls is one of the finest television programs on that's ever been made. And Betty White's a great actress. I love her altogether. And, you know, Mugler, I love Mugler's fashion. And um, Regina King's son dying of suicide at 26 was sad. Like, it's sad, but like, I don't know. I'm just, it doesn't affect me like that. I go, oh, that sucks. And then I move on. I mean, the only one that I'm kind of like, even a little less or a little less heartful about, Meatloaf, like, didn't want to get vaxxed and was super anti-vax and like it sucks he died but like eh, i don't i don't know i'm like i said i'm heartless i just continue and then i'll save my statement no i just like if i don't personally know them it's really hard for me to be like gutted over their passing in the last year and a half two years since the start of the pandemic we've had people die on a regular basis and I think this is going to be a more uh, challenge to the entertainment industry. People have lost loved ones throughout this last the last two years. People lose loved ones on a regular basis. We do not need self-grandizing thoughts and prayers from every celebrity who knew somebody who passed away. Understandable, you have friends and family. I, I get it. I get it that have you've lost you have coworkers that you've lost but there are other people out there right now who are, are going through the exact same thing yes you have a platform and you can say your if we don't get canceled after this episode i don't know what we need to do well to i don't canceled. know if it, i don't know if necessarily we're saying anything that we're going to get canceled i think people will be like wow those two men just don't have any sympathy for celebrities <laughs> I just, we shouldn't but we don't have sympathy for celebrities hey i i they they had loved ones. They had sure. families, and that sure. I do feel sympathy for the families and the sure. friends. Don't get me wrong, but sure. if I need to take a break and think to myself, "Oh no, the actress playing that person or the actor who played that person died," now I cannot do anything for the rest of the week. Then there's bigger issues that you have to address to yourself. I'm not saying all that. Don't oh, cancel am. me for that. I, I am. I get it. I get it. Like people if, make. Mm, yeah. I'm if if a celebrity, yeah. If a celebrity that like if Betty White meant something to you because she reminded you of your grandmother and your grandma was the same way and you put a lot of stock into that because they had the same attitude. I'm not saying don't be sad. I'm just saying me personally. I just don't. I just especially with what I do for work, I don't have a lot of sympathy for people I don't know. I don't have a lot of it left. Um, 
it, it's just kind of like, and I'm not sitting there, I'm not ever going to tell someone, don't be sad, don't be heartbroken, don't be gutted because your favorite celebrity died. I just don't have anyone, any celebrity that I think I would ever be that utterly heartbroken if they passed. I, I guess you, you said it best, but I'm going to just reiterate that we are all living lives. Sure. We all have issues in our lives. Sure. If the biggest issue in your life right now is an actor or celebrity passing that you had no connection with, that you had no like interaction with on a regular basis, on a one-on-one -on -one basis, where you could call them up that day, then I'm sorry, you have you you have first world problems going on in your life that you need to address because there are people in your family who are struggling with addiction. There are people struggling with uh, uh, mental health illnesses there are people struggling with COVID-19 and if again if the biggest and I, I, I've said this to many people in the last year and a half because I think I've got this whole new attitude of going through the healthcare system that you're up in Canada but if the biggest issue in your life right now is someone who you have no idea and have never spoken to passing feel bad for the family feel bad for the friends get it but you cannot let it affect your life on a day-to-day -day basis. You, you want to say something, don't you? <laughs> I just, I just I don't, don't know. Like I said, I don't understand it. I, I, could, be, and I that's could be a, a thing. heartless. And I'm, not, and I'm not going to sit here and I'm not going to say like, I need to understand it. Cause I, like I said, I don't have a celebrity. I, I felt that strong a connection to where I'd be heartbroken. I do have friends that like when Prince died were absolutely destroyed by it. And like, I'm glad that, that was somebody you could relate to. I'm glad that that was somebody you had such strong emotions towards. And like, I also get, you know, if, if someone who was clean and sober passes away because they relapsed and you really like their journey and then seeing that relapse happen can be really devastating to you because you looked up to the, like, I get that. Or if you looked up to a celebrity that passed, I just, I, I don't have any celebrity I can genuinely say that I would be more than like, oh, that really sucks to see them pass. I get it. Okay. I, I, I guess before we do get canceled officially for Chris Brown's uh, very rude statements on death, uh, let's move on. Um, and uh, let, let's talk about something kind of new and exciting that's happening before we move on to celebrity news that's happened. And that is, uh, I was going to mention at the end of the show, but we'll, we're still in that vein of movie stars, movies, and uh, award season. And that is starting tomorrow, that is Friday at 2 p.m. Mountain Standard Time, so 12 p.m. Uh, e uh, Eastern Standard Time. The Cross Border Interviews is releasing a new segment of our show. And it is a YouTube exclusive part of the show where we're going to be then by, by we, I mean our entertainment pundit and I will be taking this amazing banter that you've heard about death and bringing it to- <laughs> <laughs> I'm dead. Literally canceled. Canceled right there for that entire statement. We're, we're, we're bringing this amazing banter of ours and we're taking it to the movie reviews. So starting Fridays, starting tomorrow, as in January 28th, 28th. We are taking every Friday from two to three, and we will be reviewing movies going forward. Now, for those who seem to enjoy the amazing banter that we have, get ready because we do fight over some movies and we actually do agree on some. We've pre-recorded some to get us going through the month of, month, month of February. So tune in. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and be sure to watch out because we are going to uh, review some amazing movies and some very bad movies. I feel like we just shit on a lot of movies though, so far. Yeah, out of the I'm nine, not gonna lie. <laughs> out of the nine that we've recorded, I would say the overwhelming majority of them. Wah, wah, wah. Or I'll like so, it. So tune in. <laughs> <laughs> well listen it, it'll save you some time from having to watch it yourself or if you're on the fence on if it should be a good movie or not and we both are praising it then maybe that's a sign you shouldn't watch it i don't know 
There you go. <laughs> there you go. So it's an American Canadian perspective on movies that are coming out. We are going to have some new releases. We're going to go back into the vault of some old movies. Might review them just to give us some, uh, give you some updates on how we really liked Lord of the Rings, Return of the King, or how do we not just... even do not even tempt me to rewatch that whole series because I will rewatch the whole fucking thing and enjoy every goddamn minute of it. I'll come and... on this motherfucker speaking Elvish, <laughs> and then we'll do all nine movies of uh, Star Wars because no. that's what we do. We I will can't. Do, we will we will review some movies. So please tune in, hit the subscribe button, go to YouTube if you're watching this on YouTube. Scroll down below, hit the subscribe button because you don't want to miss it. It's going to be fun. These are not, and I, I should preempt this as well. These are not two hour reviews. No, <laughs> okay. sadly not. Okay. They're about 15, 10 to 15 minutes. Exactly. Where I think for about six of the first few movies, we complained about the fact that the movies we just watched were two and a half hours long. So tune in, be sure to subscribe, and we will be back right after this commercial break. We pride ourselves on going beyond that 15 second soundbite by becoming a backer of the show. With a quick visit to patreon.com and searching cross-border interviews, you can help continue this show. For as little as $3 a month, your support can ensure we grow and bring new and exciting things to our growing listenership. Click the link in the show notes and back the show today. was one amazing commercial. You should do what it said and donate to the show so we can continue creating great content. That's right. Welcome it back to the gorge. Cross It was gorge. It was, it was gorgeous. Gorge. It was gorgeous. Gorgeous. So <laughs> Will, Will. <laughs> Bye. Cancel. Cancel. I, I gotta go. If RuPaul can say it, I can say it as well. So, I, I have a question for you, Mikey. Usher walks into the a room, <laughs> but it's not Usher. It's somebody else. What's the first thing you would think of? I can tell you what my first thing is. Jason! Jason! I can't. I can't. This is the zaniest story, I think, to come out this year so far. Fucking Usher, or not Usher. <laughs> Jason Derulo. Got mistaken for Usher and then got into a fist fight with these two poor souls who probably just went, Oh, look, it's that Usher guy. But Jason! In, in reality, it was Jason! Jason for anyone who's listening to this, uh, <laughs> we do not hear the sound music or the ad music into the background that has been put in on every single time. Jason! 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 Um, I need you to stop. <laughs> but this is, this is, this is just whimsical. It's one of those weird, weird stories because when you told me, I was like, well, how would you confuse the two? Because they don't look alike. No, I and know. Their music is completely different. I just don't understand. Like, I don't, I never saw the video because I know TMZ had the video of Jason Derulo. Jason Derulo. You can't just say Jason. You have to say I Jason Derulo. <laughs> Jason Derulo. If we do not get sued by Saudi or whatever. No, this is where we get canceled. <laughs> there you go. Because we've tormented people. <laughs> because you 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 mistakenly called him Usher as well? <laughs> no, because we keep saying Jason, Jason Derulo, Derulo and they're going to keep hearing that song again and again and again and again and again. But it won't even be that song. It'll just be that five second clip. I know, but that's going to be us wow. i'm ready to cancel us <laughs> wow um i had did you did you see the video <laughs> it's entertaining it was so <laughs> stupid it's like y'all need to calm down it's not that serious like so, dude you're the same guy who fucking broke your front teeth eating corn because you put it on one of those fucking power drills like who's this Jason Derulo. Jason Derulo. <laughs> oh, this is a great way to come back after commercial. <laughs> but our so it, but here's the thing. Before this news dropped, I don't remember ever hearing Jason, Jason Derulo. name in the in the music like any news about him. 
for the longest time. Do people just do this just to get in the media again, sir? Or is getting ready to drop another album here? I don't know. (laughs) It's just so strange. Like, dude, what is you doing? Who who are you talking about? He's been on. (laughs) He's been all over TikTok. He's been all over like the internet. Like he's he's out there. People like know who he is. Like he's literally a meme. And now he just fucking got into a fight. For why? For what? Like some some children called you Usher. Calm down. Yeah. (laughs) I I I just I feel like this is a PR stuff because usually you don't try you you try not to do these things right and unless he was completely drunk and i do not know i don't know the full story behind it and i don't think anyone will know the full story until comes out and has it talks with like barbara walters or something so i don't i don't think they're gonna even have a talk i think it's just gonna get people are gonna forget this happened and i don't know why (laughs) i hope i never forget this happened Oh, for, if, if you've been listening for the last five minutes, you know it will continue to happen because for the entire year now, every time we say, we will have that music play. How frequently do you expect us both to say this? Say what? <laughs> I'm not saying it. I'm not going to keep tormenting these poor people, these nice people ears by saying the name of the music that you're trying to put into this I'm not putting the podcast. Whole, I'm not putting the whole song in. I, I know, but you're still trying to ruin these nice people's ears. I hey, it's better than hearing my voice say. But here's the thing: for anyone who's actually listening to this, that will be the only time that they hear. Because every time that they hear it, they will actually be hearing the actual singer. So you're telling me that I'm the only one who's getting to hear. You just croak out. Uh uh-uh. uh. Yep. This is unacceptable. What? What? Um. Okay. Well, I was. I. I kind of laughed at it. I think. I think it's the worst joke that I've ever done in my life of putting this in the show of having that part in the show. Um. Okay. Why not? It's your podcast. Yes, that's true. That's, that's true. <laughs> But I want people to continue to listen. <laughs> oh, um, for anyone who's gotten this far, and I guarantee you at least one person has, um, FYI, for anyone who has made the assumption that Michael and I are dating. I knew you were about to say this and I'm screaming internally. We are not dating. We are good friends and that's all we are. <laughs> okay. I'm screaming. I knew you were about to say it. I'm like, he about to go there. Fuck it. Why not? We're on a journey. We're on a journey. We're on a journey. I can't. Um, speaking about other celebrity news that's happened in the last 60 days, anything else that's come across your news feed? Your, your, I know we had a list of things that we wanted to talk about, but I just want to fill some time before we move on to our music segment. <laughs> I mean... Something that kind of came out today is that uh, the guy who plays Harry Potter on Broadway in The Cursed Child um, just got removed from the play uh, for reasons of, they're not being super specific, but I guess something happened backstage with him and another cast member who brought it forth. They had an independent investigation and he has been officially fired from this show. And they're like, we're not saying anybody. Did did, did, did he get missed? confused for Jason Derulo. I'm dead. Stop. And no, I, nobody knows if, if it was what it was, but it was enough to make someone feel uncomfortable, come oh, forward okay. An independent investigation happened and they found him having done it. And so he was fired, but he was also suspended immediately. And I think this is like a total 180 from what the theater community did to Karen Olivo when she came forward in Moulin Rouge uh, saying she was basically me tooing the um, director, producer, a producer of it, and everyone would like basically shut her down. Harry Potter kind of did it right. I do think maybe release information about why this guy had to be fired and hold him, continue to hold him accountable. But 
I mean, put him immediately suspended and then fired him. I think that that's what you kind of need to do. And granted, I don't know any of the specifics because they've not released any of them, but he was held accountable. Whereas nothing really happened after Karen and she got run off her own show. Which sucks. And hopefully yeah. whatever happened, this person dies. And it cost her the Tony. She, she would have won that Tony. She would have. I don't know who she is, but she would have. She was in Moulin Rouge as the Nicole Kidman part. Oh, okay. Okay, 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 okay. That Other year that had three shows nominated. Other, other other celebrity kind of celebrity entertainment news that's happened in the last 60 days. I'll just do a little quick recap here for you. Celine Dion has canceled her show, leaving 19 uh, new segments of her. I know, I was about to say. We for, I forgot Celine. I've been, okay. <laughs> I have been saying I guess this my recap has is officially done until you're done talking about Celine. But go ahead. Sorry. I, I just have been saying this since... Um, Renee died. She's just not looking good. She's looking Karen Carpenter skinny. She is just not looking in good health. I'm very worried that Celine may not make it this year. And I'm hoping that she uses this time to really like work with a nutritionist, work with a mental health professional, work with a doctor or somebody to find out what's going on because she's just been downhill ever since Renee died. I would agree. I hope she does hold out because I, I'm a big fan of Celine Dion. I love I her. At, I was actually looking forward to potentially seeing her here in Alberta when she comes here in March, but that has been uh, postponed. Her tour dates in Europe are still going ahead, but her North American leg, which was basically anything east of, I would want to say Michigan or west of Michigan, was canceled. East of the Mississippi. East of the Mississippi has been canceled. Other big political, other big entertainment news that has happened over the last 60 days. Uh, the Golden Globes, the not so Golden Globe, Power of the Dog won Best Picture for that. Uh, Degrassi, the next the Degrassi series here in Canada has been picked up by HBO Max. A new uh, kind of series is being uh, put into production. So looking forward to that. Uh, RuPaul's. UK versus the world has been announced. Two Canadian queens are joining the cast in London, England, as they compete against other queens around the world. Lemon and Jimbo from season one of Canada's Drag Race will be competing. The first two queens from Canada's Drag Race franchise to compete in front of RuPaul herself will be there starting February 1st. Uh, Hannibal rising star Gaspard uh, Ullier passed away as well. We forgot to mention that in our mm -hmm. Those have Lost. Uh, he is expected to appear in Moon Knight, the Disney Plus Marvel show. So that is going to probably change that a little bit as well. Uh, so with that, I want to move on to kind of a big uh, music story here in uh, North America. And that is, I'm going to pronounce her name in Aaliyah. Korea. Aaliyah's a new album that is expected to drop if it hasn't dropped already by the time this is airing. Uh, Aaliyah and Mike P might be able to explain this a little bit better than I can because when he proposed this, I went, who? And so, Mikey, who's Aaliyah and why is this a big deal that new music is coming from her? Well, she's like a really important R&B artist. She's inspired many of today's like modern R&B female singers. Um, a couple that come to mind specifically is her and Sierra, who are great artists. And she's been dead for uh, almost 20 years now, because I believe it was 2004 when she passed. I was going to say, I, I, I was going to say 1994, but I knew it was for oh, something. Yeah. <laughs> um, she's, she's releasing a new album posthumously, but not really her, it's her, her people. And 2001. 2001, sorry. So, so she's, the, been, the really, she's been gone for 20 years. Yeah. So the really disappointing thing with this entire album, because I love Aaliyah, and I think that this album is going to be great. Oh, and I, hold on, let me rephrase that. I love Aaliyah. I hope this album is going to be great. But it is a lot of hip hop, and she's not hip hop. They also had a lot of controversy. They've released one of the singles with The Weeknd, and it's very... Like the weekend's vocals sound good and her mixing was really weird. 
Um, it was definitely tracks that she had pre-recorded that she didn't get to release before she passed. And like every single feature artist on this is all men, which is really disappointing for like one of the biggest female R&B artists that inspired a whole generation of female R&B artists that we would love to hear on this album. Like an Aaliyah and her song would be fucking amazing. And we're not getting that, at least from what they have stated so far. It is entirely men and like 95% hip hop artists. For those who do not know, uh, I would head over to Spotify or wherever you get your, you stream your music or even YouTube and uh, type in Poison. Uh, that is the name of the song that Aaliyah and The Weeknd have released. Uh, mm-hmm. I will say that I did listen to it. This is my concern. So mm-hmm. I listened to it. And like Mikey just said, uh, the audio for Aaliyah's tracks was not the best. So nope. I did I did, did a bit of research and I was like, okay, that seems weird. So I did a bit of research and I was like, okay, let's try to figure out why it was so bad. So like myself, I heard the bad version, but they have released a better version of it, but I'm not sure if I've heard the better version of the Aaliyah's tracks on Poison or if I heard the crappy version. So now that I know there's two versions of the same song, that yeah. have literally been released and it's just the difference of her voice, uh, her vocal tracks. It has me concerned that they have fucked this one up. I, I really think they may have. I mean, the fact that it's just a bunch of men from the <coughs> front is an issue. Like, we were robbed of the chance to have Aaliyah, Normani, SZA, her on an album together because this this album feels like a vanity project for the specifically the weekend but also like drake and snoop dogg like i love snoop dogg but why seems like a lot of canadians are coming to Aaliyah's side here on this one yeah i i just i love ali i love Aaliyah. she's so good i'm um, actually she was in a little bit of a full circle moment i watched interview with a vampire recently she was in uh, Queen of the Damned. She was and the she was the main character in Queen of the Damned. She was the Queen of the Damned. Yeah, because so that, she was, that was released posthumously as well, right? I believe so. Yeah. Now I need to know. <laughs> now, for those who were listening to it, I'm just going to keep on saying. Yes, I, um, I have it already pulled up, so don't even worry, babes. Uh, yeah, 2002 posthumous release. I remember that coming out. And now that I know that connection, it's like, okay. Um, I hope they don't discredit everything that she has given to the hip hop community and the R&B community as well. Because I know you said that it's more of a hip hop vibe and she was more of an R&B singer. Um, That doesn't mean that there's not cross- Oh, for sure. I just think having only men on here is very problematic for. And here's the thing. I don't, we don't know the full list, right? That's true. We don't know the full list. So they might be because they said at the beginning of the month that this album would be dropping in January. We are coming to the end of January and they've already changed one song. So I can imagine they are bringing three people into studio this week to try and get a song ready so they can release it as their second single of this album to say, hey, look what we've done. We have a song. Yeah, I really, you know, fingers crossed, because I think that this is a really great opportunity to get more Aaliyah music, but I just don't want it at the expense of Aaliyah's legacy. Other musicians that have, are, are, have announced that they're going back into studio is Kelly Clarkson, our girl Kelly Clarkson. My girl I do Kelly. love Kelly. She's going to be releasing her 10th studio album this year. She announced that earlier in this, uh, earlier this month or late last month, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and Canadian reference here because we all love a Canadian reference. My girl, the Queen of the North, the actual Queen of the North, not this Brooklyn Lynn Heights Queen of the North shit that they she's trying to boycott, but the Queen of the North, Shania Twain, country's music stars, 
favorite female artist, 1990s. Whose bed, whose boots have your bed, whose bed have your boots been under? That's right. I know. Try saying that 10 times fast. Exactly. Any man of mine, Miss Shania Dwayne is going to be releasing. She's back in the uh, studio. She's released a bias, her social media feed that she's back in the studio. She's expecting to have new music released by the end of this year. So be prepared for that for all you Canadian country fans or even country fans all around the world who are listening to this. Ah. I'm excited. Man, that whole thing made me feel like a woman. Oh, mm. Damn right. I've got a I love Shania. Two. I do really love Shania. Who, I... Exactly. Who doesn't love Shania? Shania and Celine, you need to get together. You need to have a collab. You need to have some really great French country music. Like, honestly, it would be awesome. Adele announced that her residency was being postponed due to COVID. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Look, this is how prepared we were to record this. We had a list of six things that we wanted to talk about, and we're talking about it all because that's what happens here on the cross border interviews with Chris Brown on the Entertainment Rundown. I also uh, sent him a lot of articles randomly <laughs> with zero context, zero, hey, look at this. I just sent an article. And then it wait for him to respond before I respond about my thoughts on it. Hence why we started with Fart Jar Girl. That did get sent right off the bat with zero context, other than maybe look at this shit. Literally. <laughs> Literally. Um, so we have a lot of good music. Oh, I should mention this because this is my favorite thing. And I was, I, I sent Mikey a, a message on, a, on a, or I sent, him a, sent him a message. I was like, Celtic Thunder. Anyone who knows me knows I like my Irish men. Celtic Thunder has released a new album. That's right. If you have not listened to it, go to Spotify right now and download it, stream it, because it is an amazing album. It has some great music on it, and Celtic Thunder is the bomb. My husband and I went to our very first public outing after we announced our engagement to Celtic Thunder. Greatest concert in my life. <gasps> Mazel. Jason Derulo. <laughs> I can't. Um, so we will be back in about... 30 seconds uh we're going to take a quick break and we're going to come back with what's coming up in the realm of movies and tv shows for february and the future is there's one and it's going to be a madness of actual epic proportions because let's be honest marvel just needs to have some more information more more money thrown at them so they're going to the madness uh so we'll be back in a few seconds talk to you later guys not talk to you later i'll be back on the other side. Wow, that was a bad <laughs> extra. I'm just going to keep this going until I can say it properly. We'll be back after this commercial break. <laughs> that was a journey. We pride ourselves on going beyond that 15 second sound bite. Be sure to hit that subscribe button today to be kept in the loop of all the great episodes that are coming up on the show. Also, Click on the links in the show notes and follow our social media pages as well. That was an another, another amazing, amazing commercial break. And we're back and we're going to be talking. It was gorgeous. It was gorgeous. <laughs> it was oh, gorgeous. Gorgeous. So we're going to be talking about some upcoming movies and TV shows. And remember, uh, we are going to uh, we're we're gonna watch a lot of these movies, so you don't even have to watch them. Just wait till the review comes out, and then you can decide for yourself if you want to watch it or not, based on our scientific scientific rating system of sure. five stars, which you'll find out tomorrow when we review three amazing movies. That I cannot name for you right now because, because they are, you don't know. <laughs> they are escaping <laughs> my head. But yes, we'll tune in tomorrow for, for three great episodes of Night of the Movies, movie reviews, YouTube exclusive on the Crossboard interviews. With yeah, you'll get whatever movie he feels like throwing up tomorrow. That's yeah, why you don't know. Pretty much. Pretty much. <laughs> um, upcoming movies. We've had a month and a half, well, almost two months since the last time we talked about upcoming movies, and we've had seen a lot come out. Spider-Man, Spider-Man No Way Home. We've had... Scream. Scream, Scream. 5. So Scream. good. It Scream. was amazing. Scream 5, Hotel Transylvania Transformation, Who? Uh, The King's Daughter. So we've had a few movies come out, but we want we want to talk about what's coming out because 
we want to get you prepared for what's coming out in February to the movie theaters. And because uh-huh. we are amazing at keeping you informed about all the great movies that are going to be coming out and some not so great movies. So what's coming out on your list there, Mikey? Well, we have J-Lo's Marry Me. Which I just saw the trailer for this movie. I did not know that this was a thing until I saw it uh, literally this morning. And it, it is about uh, J-Lo, who is basically playing herself. Marrying Maluma, playing himself. Marrying Owen Wilson, who marries Owen Wilson instead, who plays himself. Yeah. So it is a movie, and it's coming out on Valentine's Day. It's another one of those uh, movies that you just want to go see with your loved one. Go see it. Yeah. It yeah. looks like the most Jennifer Lopez movie of all the Jennifer Lopez movies. Have you not seen Monster in Law? Again, I, I love Jennifer <laughs> Lopez movies. I'm not going in expecting fucking the best thing I've ever seen. Oscar nominee. No, God, no. Lopez. She's not nominated. She should have. Mm, I'm not even going to say that. Nope. Wow, we almost got a controversial opinion there. You sure did. Um, <laughs> death, of, death on the Nile, the sequel to Midnight on the uh, tr- Murder on the Murder Orient. on the Orient Express. There you go, Midnight Express. Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil. <laughs> there you go. Uh, Kenneth Bragna is back, and uh, Kenneth Bragna plays uh, perf- uh, detective. Oh my God, my mind's blanking on it. Hey, there you go. So uh, yeah. I'm looking forward to that, actually. I, I remember hearing about it, but I wasn't 100% sure if I was going to watch it. But then I saw the cast list and I was like, hey, the only one that I would totally not want to see on that list is Army Hammer. Agreed. We don't want no <laughs> cannibalism here. Cannibalism, 2022 style. But uh, listen, this movie is going to be probably bad. Yes. I'm going to be very honest. Like the It has such a great bad. cast. Like I have now set myself up anytime I see a cast from like everyone looks amazing in this. I cannot wait. It's usually bad. Don't look up's a really good example of that. Yep. Oh, yes. And if you want to, you can hear our complete review on Don't Look Up tomorrow at 2 30 when it comes You're committing out. to Don't Look Up, I guess. <laughs> yes, I am. I actually looked at I looked it up quickly and I saw which three that we're reviewing tomorrow. So the three movies that we're reviewing tomorrow for anyone who wants to tune in is Tick Tick Boom. Learn how Chris Brown does not know anything about the movie industry or the theater industry when he reviews that movie. The second is Don't Look Up, another movie where Chris Brown went into it thinking about something and not really expecting anything out of it. And the third one, The Matrix Resurrection. So those are the three movies that are on top at Night of the Movies on the Cross Border Interviews tomorrow tomorrow at 2 p.m. Mount Standard Time, 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Work. Check your local local listings. (laughs) Also, we have Medea Homecoming (laughs) coming out. Not uh, as a film we have watched and reviewed. Um, Tyler Perry done told all of us that Boo 2, or no, the Medea funeral was going to be his last outing ever as Medea. He needed to retire her, blah, 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 blah. But he could not put his cash cow away and has decided to truck her out for another movie to give us another Medea film that has lost the luster. Yeah, I, I will be honest. I think I've seen one Medea movie in my life and I just, it wasn't for me. Uh, I, and I I do like Tyler Perry as a director, as an actor. I just was not a fan of the Medea movies, but to each their own. I liked Medea until it became very like commercialized mainstream because then it just- Because it started the... as a TV show, right? No, it started out as plays. Okay. It was plays he did. His plays are great. And then he started writing movies and his first few movies he did of the Medea franchise were very good. And then as it's gotten on and gone on, he's the only one in the writer's room. He's sitting there writing all these damn things himself about people and experiences that he has not lived to understand. And he cranks these TV shows and movies out in like a weekend, which is why they're shit. For anyone who wants to send any negative comments about what Michael no, just said, I, and I'm not the saying cross-border photography. Listen, and I'm not, and I'm not saying I don't, and I'm not saying I don't like Medea movies or I don't like Tyler Perry. I'm just saying he should be bringing more people into the writers' room with him. He should be taking more time on scripts rather than cranking them out like a machine. How many scripts? He's the only one who writes for his entire studios, and he produces a lot of things. How many things are you cranking out? Because he has like four or five TV shows right now. He does about six or seven movies a year you're cranking out a lot of material that's going to not be great. True. And it's also very cookie cutter at this point. 
Yeah, I was going to say that, but I'll let you say it. So that way, I, I my can, anti Tyler Perry man. I, I can redeem myself for saying the death of something. <laughs> Uh, another movie which I'm totally not looking forward to, but I'm still surprised that they're still coming out with it, is Jackass Forever. <sighs> just Goodbye, when you Jackass. thought, just when you thought Stevo and Johnny Knoxville was done, they bring you back in. Uh, Jackass was a popular show way back in I think early 2000s with the rise of punk and all that, and they are doing one last hurrah but i think the last hurrah was the last time and they're bringing it back one more time watch it don't watch it i just i'm not it's not on my list of things i'll be going to the movie theaters or watching just like avatar um we also have the new tom holland movie uncharted coming out yes anyone who is a playstation uh, fan knows that uncharted is a well liked popular video game my concern with this one and this is this is any concern with any super or any video game gets transferred into a movie is they usually fuck it up. They fucked it up with World of Warcraft. They fucked it up with Super Mario. Are they going to fuck it up with Uncharted? Uh, They originally wanted Nathan Fillion, Canadian actor, Edmonton boy, to play the lead of Nathan Drake, but they gave it to Tom Holland instead. I'm concerned. I do not think Tom Holland is the appropriate person for this role, but that is just me. I ain't never played the video game, so I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Um, uh, they, we also have Moonfall coming out, which is basically don't look up except serious. <laughs> it really. Have you seen the commercials for it? It looks like it's the same movie. No, but we will review it in probably March when we can both see it. <laughs> Sure. I don't know. Uh, anyone who's a scary movie fan, first we started off in January with Scream. Now we're coming back with Texas Chainsaw Massacre, another another version of this amazing horror f- uh, series, just because that's all that Hollywood seems to be pumping out these days is whatever we did in the past, we can do it again, but just make it better and make it with a lot more skin and tight clothes for women and men. Listen... <laughs> I think that some of the like Scream Five is brilliant, and I think if it goes that way, it's not called Scream Five. It's just called Scream. I'm gonna say it. I'm not saying anything. I'm just saying it's just... literally Scream Five, and I don't care, and I will fight anyone on it. <laughs> it's, it's, called Scream Scream. Five. it's Scream Five. Scream. It's Scream Five. Scream. It's Scream Five. Jason Derulo. I can't. Okay. <laughs> I think if they go the way of like that, where it is more thought out, I, I think it could be a really rousing success. I love a good horror movie and I, you know, some of these old horror movie monsters and especially from like the nineties, the eighties, the early two thousands, I think, I think if it's not broke, don't fix it. I would love a Jennifer's body too. With Megan Fox, that movie's everything. I is, hear is, is it, isn't that just called Jennifer? What's her name? Megan Fox's life with machine gun gun kelly you leave machine gun kelly and miss megan fox and their love alone it's a little weird but you know what they're both a little weird and they, i'm happy for they them fit perfectly listen i will jennifer's body too i think if we want to really bring back a good scary movie that's like full camp that movie is camp period camp camp, camp with like a capital c-a-m-p camp bring camp. it back and keep it in the same vein uh one last movie before i talk about the big movie that's coming out not in february but in uh like literally the third fourth day of march um but studio 666 this is this is kind of under the radar film of stupid horror film anyone who knows dave grawl of the foo fighters knows how kind of personable what this movie i saw the trailer for this and it looks atrocious but it looks so bad it's good that's my that's my like that's how my mindset's working on this movie so anyone who knows they uh the foo fighters uh want to record a new album they go to a haunted house and things start happening uh they have the entire band doing this movie and i'm looking forward to it i when I saw it, I was actually screaming out loud. I, I laughed in the commercial because it was so camp. It was good. And I love a good movie like that. Listen, 
I will allow it to be made. I do not know if I will like it. And you know what? I'm open to some bad movies. I do enjoy a good bad movie, but like, oh, it just, it looked so bad. Um, the other, the last movie I want to talk about before we talk about the kind of the rotating film adaptation of whatever the hell Marvel's doing with their lineup of movies is DC's The Batman is <gasps> scheduled to appear, uh, scheduled for release on March 4th. Now we are recording this on January 25th, 4th. I, I'm not holding my breath out <laughs> to say that this is going to come out on March 4th. With COVID-19, everything could be up in the air. But this is probably my Spider-Man. I'm looking forward to this. I was not, but I've seen trailer after trailer, and I'm loving the fact that they're sticking so close to the original comic. So I'm looking forward to it. I'm excited. I also love how before it even got like made, people were like, oh, Robert Pattinson's going to do a terrible job. And then he was responding to people on Twitter like, yeah, I keep saying that, and I'll do even worse. I'm like, you know what? I love me a troll like that. You better get it, Robert. Uh, before we move on to TV shows, I want to uh, just talk about this before we do talk, uh, before we move on. Uh, we were supposed to talk about this at the top of the hour, at top of the show, but I, I left it till now. Doctor Strange and uh, Madness, uh, Multiverse of Madness. They are, if the rumors are true, which you should never believe rumors because they are, if, if Andrew Garfield tells you anything, you know it's a complete lie by now. Um, Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness is expected to be one of the highly anticipated films of 2022. I'm, I, I have not been to the movie theater since I saw Endgame. Uh, mm -hmm. Avengers Endgame and uh, Detective Pikachu. I might have to make an exception for Multiverse of Madness because I saw the trailer for Multiverse of Madness. It looks so good. And girl, I'm not even going to say things that I said during that mo that uh, trailer. I am stoked for this movie. Also, I love how the rumored cameo list just keeps changing every week. Oh, yeah. My favorite right now is Tom Cruise's Iron Man. So for anyone who knows, anyone who uh, follows the Marvel Cinematic Universe, you know that one of the Marvel Studios before Disney bought them, Tom Cruise was the leading contender for T Iron Man, for Tony Stark. John Favreau said, uh-uh. Don't want to deal with them. I want Robert Downey Jr. <laughs> Hence why we have Robert Downey Jr. So in an alter uh, alternate universe, a multiverse, if you please, <laughs> Tom Cruise would have been the Iron Man that we know and love today or despise today. Also I, a chance to bring an X-Men. Like There's so much going on in this movie that there's speculation. And I will... I. The closer we get to the release date, I think more, more actual spoilers will drop. I'm going to try to not spoil it. But this movie has been kept under wraps a lot. Like, yeah. it is probably one of the best kept secrets in Marvel's uh, repertoire. And let's be honest, <laughs> they don't have much to keep secrets because they seem to drop hints every single day. So I'm looking forward to it. I'm excited for it. And just, yes. Doctor Strange, finally. And like Mikey said at the beginning of it, Morbius was supposed to come out in January. It's actually supposed yeah, to come Morpheus. out this week. Morbius was supposed to come out this week. It was actually supposed to come out on Thursday this week, but it's been pushed back to April. Uh, Jarrett Leto, uh, Matt Smith, anyone at Sony, can you get your shit together, please? Because I really want to see this movie because uh, Morbius I don't think was... it's been filmed. On I don't. The, <laughs> on the news of TV shows that are coming out this month or back, uh, let's start off with the uh, big one, the probably the thing that everyone's going to be watching, uh, the probably the greatest sports 
show in the history of anything. RuPaul's UK versus the world <laughs> is starting on February 1st. That's not where I thought you were going with that. I totally thought you were like, the show everyone's going to be watching on HBO Max Euphoria. And then I'm like, and then you said sports. And I'm like, is he about to say the Olympics? Who's watching the Olympics? Certainly not me. Every but- Canadian will be tuning into their TV, uh, to CBC, CTV Global this month as Team Canada, Team USA, Team World goes to China to take on each other in the Olympic gold medals, silver, bronze, covid china all that fun stuff china so china. uh olympics are back february 4th opening ceremonies in china uh winter olympics i did say that and then we have rupaul's coming back with if you have not seen rupaul's season 14 that's already out uk versus the world canada girls are going to be taking on uh, some queens from around the world anything you're looking forward to well uh-oh. I am currently, <laughs> oh, it <God>. just finished, <laughs> it, uh, it just finished last week. So I've been very behind. So I just kind of binged it recently and I've got two episodes left. So by the time this airs, it will have been finished and I will be probably freaking out. Yellow Jackets. Okay. Um, which, <laughs> I thought you were going to start with the other one. <laughs> no, 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 no. Yellow Jackets. It is um, these, this state champion soccer team of girls go their plane goes down in Canada somewhere and then they survive for 19 months and it's heavily rumored there may be cannibalism involved and like very Lord of the Flies very like mystery and it has um Christina Ricci in it I love her I know you don't and Juliet Juliet Lewis Juliet Lewis and brilliant it's brilliant. It's a really, did I just butcher her name? No, you did. You got it right. I just, I don't oh. like her either. I know you don't like her. You don't like Christina. I think it's a great, it's very, very, very slow burn because the, and I read a, a, a what's it called? Not a review, uh, an interview with the showmaker. And he basically said he has planned five seasons, that this story is going to be exactly five seasons. And he has, it all structured in his mind where he wants to go. And I'm going to sit here and say more television programs need to do that so that we actually get well thought out stories and not, uh, oh, we have another season. Let's do this story. Oh, we have another season. Let's do like it, it, put more thought into it. And okay. so I'm, I know you, you're going to hate this. Uh, you, have you saw episode one? Have you seen any of it yet? I refuse to see it. Oh my God. Refuse. It's so good. It's It's so good. It's on the list. Oh my (laughs) fucking God. Um, okay. So let's just let, okay. The last time I watched a show where they said, I've planned out five seasons of the show and I know how it's going to start middle end. You about to say sense eight. No, I was about to say lost. Oh, well, because J.J. Abrams and whoever was producing that said, we have an idea how this is going to start, middle, end, so on and so forth. Spoiler alerts, worst ending, worst show, everything after opening up the hatch, that's right, was worse. Was the, like, TV died in my mind when I saw that show. So I think so- Lost is a good, but Lost also had, what, 20 episode seasons? This has only 10 episodes. So they have to be more concise with their storytelling, which I think is also smarter. We need to stop shooting for 20 episode seasons and just allow a story to be 10 episodes without filler, which is what happens a lot of times, especially when you're trying to tell this epic, like mystery story, people are gonna figure it out in the first 10 minutes when you've got 20 episodes for a single season and nowhere to really go. It's the British complex, right? Because Britain's always been good at that. Britain's always oh, Britain been does able great to, television programs. It's being able to concisely tell a story within like 10 episodes or three or episodes. Less. Like Dracula is probably my the one I would point to as the probably the best because I, I love Stephen Moffat and Mark Gatiss, who wrote Sherlock, who wrote uh, Dracula. Um, they were able to tell a story. They were able to tell a story from beginning, middle, end in three episodes and say, here it is. That's it. And walk yep. away from it. And not be, okay, we have to bring it back because X, Y, and Z is good. No, 
you told the story, you're happy with it, move on. And well, and a lot of times the um, networks will say, oh, well, we won't guarantee you get another season. And so it's like, or, oh, we want to end the show here. Oh, well, we're going to give you another season if you want it. And it's like, well, that's money. And sure. So now they have to prolong the story. I think if more television people went in and said, I want to tell a story that's five seasons. This is the episode count. This is the plan from the jump. That I think creates a smarter kind of, because there's definitely shows that can go on. Like I love Doctor Who. That doesn't necessarily need to have an end cap. It does because it, they regenerate it. They regenerate and it's a whole new show every three, four seasons. With something like this that is more of a mystery, the mystery stops eventually. Just like Pretty Little Liars, I is a really good example of this. They keep bringing it back for more seasons and it's like, how much more mystery can you tell? Oh, now there's another person is A and we don't know who, it's like, just give us a concrete story, five seasons, whatever. Like it doesn't need to be more. This, it's got a really good mystery. It's got a really good, like trying to figure it out and figure out who lives. And you don't even know, cause you only know four characters, five technically, five characters that have made it out of the wilderness that lived. The rest, you don't know. We just saw person number, confirmed person number one die last night on the episode we watched. And I don't even know for sure if she's dead dead. Okay. It's, it's I, very cerebral. It's very like intricate. And I love a good mystery. I do too. I, if my husband watches it, I will watch it. I will. I really would highly recommend. It is a very good mystery. And it's not like you hate those two. It's not super heavy on them. I mean, they are main characters, but it fluctuates between them as children and them as adults. So you don't always get them. Like it's not full episodes of them as an adult. It's uh, okay. a teenage version. Uh, I might have to watch it. It is. It, it's very Lord of the Flies based. Like that's the whole premise behind it. And like, I think that's a really cool concept that we don't always explore. That's true. Uh, um, go ahead. I was going to say second show that I have kind of that's coming out currently is Euphoria with Zendaya. And I was like dragging my dragging my self saying, oh, I don't know. I'll give it time. When there's more of it out, I'll probably watch it. I finally sat down and watched it. It's so good. I see why Zendaya won the Emmy. It's so good. So did you hear the rumors about her boyfriend coming on the show? Tom Holland might be on the show. Interesting. Interesting. You heard, you heard it here first by a TMZ. <laughs> I will say every single person in this show, none of them dress like they're going to high school. You just, I'm never watching it now. If they all dress like, I literally watched this show and I go, that's not high school appropriate that you would be sent home for that. That's not realistic. I will say though, it's got some very great moments. It's also full frontal male nudity all the time. Like it's literally like wall to wall penis. I'm kind of here for it. <laughs> Eric Dane. Oh, yes. You do see Eric Dane's penis in the first episode and it is confirmed. He said it is his penis, not a prosthetic. <clears throat> Look at that. Uh, also coming out this month for TV shows, which I'm kind of looking forward to, but at the same time, not Pam and Tommy, the documentary series or the sort of the docu series, the romance, uh, Hulu series about Pamela Anderson and Tommy Lee. I was going to say Tommy Lee Jones, <laughs> Tommy Lee and Pamela about creating their sex tape and then having it sort of released. And for those who are wondering, yes, it's on Disney Plus. <laughs> is it on Disney Plus or is it on Hulu? It's on Hulu in the States. Down the, up here in Canada, it's on Disney Plus. <laughs> oh, my land. Huh? Uh, also, the other one that I'm looking forward to, it's not coming out in February, but it's one that I'm looking forward to over the next month. And that is Joe versus Carol. Kate McKinnon's first scripted show about Tiger King's Joe Exotic is coming to TV on whatever Peacock network, if you get NBC. For anyone who's listening in Canada, you're about to hear, uh, understand why I hate, 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 hate Paramount Plus. 
Peacock is not available in Canada. This show is not going to be available in Canada until they open it up for Canadian users. So in the time-honored tradition of Chris Brown hating things, Paramount Plus, you're on the list. Peacock, NBC, you're on the list now. Anything else you're looking forward to, Mikey? Television show-wise? No. I feel like right now I've kind of given up. It's a lot of movies. I've also kind of given up on... um, the CW, which was consuming most of my life. <gasps> speaking of the CW, speaking of the CW, it's potentially oh, no. getting it's potentially getting bought out by another organization. Oh and yeah, and they're going to cancel all the shows that are currently on, and just buy up uh, programming from other organizations. That does not shock me. Uh, I think the DC universe on the the CW DC universe has come to a screeching halt with the ending of arrow a few seasons ago i know they are still putting out stuff but it's not the same after arrow left and since arrows left let's be honest Stephen abel has basically gone on michael rosenbaum's uh podcast and said a few great things about them i mean i just i don't know it's gotten i like star girl I just think that it reached a point where, again, this is where they could have really benefited from shorter seasons. I think it's so many filler episodes you're doing, and I get, you know, you want to tell the big story arch of, um, like, one big bad villain, and but, like, you have 22 episodes to fill. You can't do 10 episodes of main story in a 20, and stretch that over a 22, so you have to put in little filler and little here and little there, and it's like, it's just not needed. I think some of the most concise storytelling on the CW is when they do 12 episodes or five episodes. Like the five episode Riverdale arc they just did was amazing. The first season of Riverdale was 12 episodes and it was perfectly constructed. Even some of the, I believe Arrow first season was 12 episodes too. Brilliant. Like I'm, this is gonna, if I ever run for office, my platform is gonna be just stop making 20 episode seasons. It's not needed. And then Rand it, Paul would say, You're trying to silence free enterprise. I sure am. Um, so we are about to introduce a brand new segment on the show to end off this show. And this is gonna be a new segment on the show every single time that Mikey comes on for the entertainment rundown, and that is. That's right. The race to the bottom over the next (laughs) over the next 12 months. We're going to be talking about who got canceled and why they got canceled. And so long. Farewell. I feel like we need Enya or Sarah McLaughlin singing Arms of the Angel right now, because we are going to talk about who got canceled in January of 2022. Can we do that as like an in memoriam uh for YouTube in December of the entire list of who got canceled. Do you want to do it then? I kind of will keep like bring it up each week, but like oh yeah, each we're, week, each we're month, gonna do like we're gonna do a photo montage. I think like like how <laughs> and we're gonna the, get like, Usher memoriam. or Jason Derulo to come on the show and sing "Arms of an Angel" by Sarah McLaughlin. <laughs> I'm horrified, but also aroused by that thought. Um, so in 2022, we've only had a few, not a lot, but a few people who've gotten canceled. Uh, I think the big one that we want to start off with is Prince Andrew. Finally, after months and months of hiding behind uh, royal privilege, has been canceled by the queen herself for a potential, uh, I, I want to say allegations, because they have not been found uh, true in, in the court of law, so therefore I cannot get sued right now. Uh, allegations of sexual misconduct towards a minor. Uh, he has been canceled. So long, farewell. I feel like this at this point in time, anyone who's watching is about to see uh, Katniss Everdeen do the three finger salute to uh, the sky or the people of District 12. Who else in your books got canceled there? We also lost JoJo Siwa to the cancel train. And why was that? Well, she hardcore was dating this Trump supporter who was super transphobic and made a lot of really problematic racial comments before. And so because of that, by association, JoJo Siwa has been canceled. But she's probably just going to get, she's on this whole Twitter, like, no, 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 like, I'm changing her. So she thinks that you can change so that they're on this whole like 
trying to regain her image, but she's been canceled. I remember her fondly. It's, I can't stand you. Um, <laughs> we also lost Chris Noth. Mr. Bake, after the Peloton incident, it was announced that he, like his character in The Good Wife, was doing inappropriate things with women. Uh, some women came forward and accused uh, Chris Noth of sexually uh, harassing them or assaulting them as well, saying inappropriate things. Uh, so after his quick departure from the new Sex in the City show, uh, it was announced that he was no longer going to appear and they were going to reshoot or re-edit the final episode of the season sure to edit him out. Chris Noth, we remember you fondly. Well, also he had a full Peloton huh? commercial too as like a, after now, the episode aired. And now Peloton Peloton's was, getting canceled too. <laughs> well, Peloton canceled him. They basically were like, mm, babes, no, and got rid of him. Yeah, but Peloton's getting canceled too because they're like in deep financial trouble. They're not getting canceled. They're getting bankrupt. <laughs> yeah, canceled, bankrupt, same thing. Yeah. So um, Jamie Lynn Spears. Jamie Lynn Spears has been canceled. Finally. Fuck that bitch. Fuck Miss Jamie Lynn Spears. Ain't nobody want to hear you and your raggedy ass try and talk about, oh, things I should have said to save my image right now. Nobody fucking cares, Jamie. Get the fuck out of here. You need to very much leave Britney alone, my girl. And everything Britney says, I agree. Fuck you. you someone should have slapped you. Should have slapped you right across your mouth. Which Britney did say. I agree, Britney. Someone should have. You should have done it. Maybe she wouldn't be acting the damn fool. Jamie Lynn Spears. We remember you fondly. But you Fuck you, Jamie Lynn. Ain't nobody remembering canceled. your raggedy ass fucking fondly. So. <laughs> Who else? I feel like there was more cancellations. I feel like, I thought there was too, but I can't remember. Uh, there was always from the previous year of J.K. Rowling not appearing in the uh, Harry Potter reunion uh, show or appearing but not appearing in 2019 in the reunion show. Oh, you mean filmed in 2019 all yeah. above her head. That was pretty iconic um uh, i don't know i feel like there was a couple of cancellations because i feel like it, i feel like for a while i was just sending you this person got canceled or this person died yeah well i think i think i took more exception to the people who died in 2020 yeah. <laughs> because i was like okay who at this point in time who hasn't i'm just quickly go, scrolling through the list of things who hasn't died or who got who's canceled uh, I think uh, we should make mention that Daniel Radcliffe has been uh, hired to play the Weird Al character in the new biopic movie Weird Al. Of Weird Al, yeah. I just go <laughs> literally our our conversations usually by the end of the month are, hey, here's what we're talking about. Oh, Josh Whedon is finally being canceled as well for his amazing amazing timely news article in newsweek of how ray fisher the person who played cyborg in justice league was the reason why justice league did so well that article came out on martin luther king's birthday and he was attacking a black man yeah um i love how him and jk rowland just could have kept their fucking mouth shut and not said a goddamn thing and have both basically decided, hold my beer. I've been, a, I'm a beloved writer. I've created some of the most beloved characters of all time. Let me continue to open my fucking mouth and say problematic. Like he did a full interview and like did not help himself at all. People already were like on a cancel Joss Whedon train. And then he did this interview and confirmed literally every single bad thing people thought about him. And Ben Affleck has come out and said that he's no longer doing any superhero movie because of the bad taste that Justice League has in his mouth. So DC's dead. Fuck DC. DC, you're officially being canceled. <laughs> you're on the um, list. Even though also that you canceled. Oh, Arthur. In the arms of an angel. <laughs> It's gonna. It's shocking. I'm surprised they're actually canceling it. Twenty five years. I know it's a long fucking time. Of the aardvark from 
PBS. Buster, Francine. Muffy. Muffy. I love Muffy. Brain. Mr. Ratburn. Mr. Gay Ratburn. Ah, love it. Love that journey. We remember you fondly. Unfortunately, yes, you have been canceled. Not for the reasons why the others have been canceled, but no. you have been canceled. Uh, February 25th is going to be a day of mourning in this household. As I just said at the top of the hour, there aren't many things celebrities celebrities who die don't really affect me that way. The cancellation of Arthur, which was instrumental in my life as growing up as a teenager, as growing up as a college student and university student, I remember watching Arthur every Sunday morning on PBS Kids because if you could get some great... I just can't say it anymore. Arthur, we will miss you fondly. Pal, I missed you, pal. DW. Okay. Anyway, uh, for everyone here at the Crossword Interview Podcast, no, it's not Crossword Interview Podcast anymore. These were she no don't longer. forgot. She don't forgot her own fucking thing's name. I uh, also canceled in 2022. Chris Brown and Michael Nichols Pate. Nope, Mm-mm, she's not getting canceled. Um, for so uh, I, I guess my last question to you, Mikey, is this: What's coming up? What do you have going on in the next month? Um, let's see. I I'm just, watching... I'm just, I'm just asking a question. I'm just asking a question. I'm just asking questions. What was that her name? What was her character from death to 2021? I'm just asking questions. <laughs> no, that was 2020. 2021. No, 2021. Was... That was no, 2021. No, it was 2020. 2021, Tracy Allman played. No, I'm being gaslit right now. I'm being gaslit live on, <laughs> yeah. well, not live, but. Yeah. Oh, Lisa Kudrow. Lisa Kudrow. I'm just asking the questions. That's right. No, was she was on... also in 2021. Tracy Lisa, Allman. Kudrow, Lisa Kudrow. No, Tracy Allman was, that was 20. I literally am being gaslit here, people. Oh my God, we're not. Gaslight, this. gatekeep, girl boss. <laughs> Christopher Brown. I'm goop gagged and gawked. <laughs> uh, but anyway, uh, thank you so much for doing this once again. Absolutely happy to be here. Everyone, have yourself an excellent rest of your Thursday, Thursday or whatever day you're listening to this. Uh, remember, every Friday we will be having movie reviews on Night at the Movies on the Cross Border Interviews. So for everyone here at the Cross Border Interviews with Chris Brown, have yourself an excellent day. And remember, keep talking. <laughs>